Have you ever wondered why you feel drained and frustrated when you sit down at your computer? It might not be the volume of your workload. It could be your digital clutter. I'm talking untitled files strewn everywhere, hundreds of unread emails, a to-do list that feels never ending. In this video, I'll show you how to hit the reset button on your digital life. Now, let's get started. When do you need a reset? Here are three indicators that your digital life is ready for a hard reset. First, visual clutter. When you look at your digital workspace, your computer, is it messy? Your desktop and your download folders are full of random files. Your note-taking app is a burning trash heap. Your task manager, your to-do list, gives you anxiety instead of clarity. This is not a pleasant environment to work in. Second, a lack of clarity. At any given moment, you can't tell what's important right now. You're not sure what to work on and don't know what's coming up next, in the next hour, in the next day, in the next week. That leads to a lot of doubt and confusion when it comes to making decisions. You end up wasting a lot of time going in circles again and again, always second guessing what you should be doing. Third, energy drain. Clutter and confusion are painful to the brain and eventually you'll develop a kind of aversion to it. You don't want to look at or interact with your digital world because it's overwhelming. When that starts to happen, your work becomes a slog. You'd rather do anything else, which isn't great for your career prospects, your professional growth, or your income. Here's how to do a complete digital reset in four steps. The first two will declutter your workspace, and the final two steps will set you up for action. Step number one, archive everything. Move the files on your desktop or in your downloads folder or in your documents folder. Move them all into one giant folder with the name archive and today's date. The great thing about this is it only takes a minute or two and you're really not deleting anything. Do the same thing in your cloud storage drive such as Dropbox or Google Drive and then do the same thing in your note taking app. Move all those notes into one folder titled archive with today's date. Finally, do it in your task manager. I know, this might feel like the hardest one because every single to-do feels urgent or important. But the truth is, if everything is equally important, then nothing is important. You have to clear the decks and start fresh. Move all your to-dos into the archive. Et tout enfin. This shouldn't take more than five to 10 minutes total across all platforms. Just archive and move on. Step number two, clear your inboxes. Let's start with email. The most straightforward solution is to archive them all and start fresh. Now remember, you'll always be able to find a certain email again using the search function. It all remains available. You might not be comfortable with this seemingly radical approach because you feel there are still actionable items or useful information lingering in your email inbox. In this case, I recommend just deciding how far back your emails are still actionable. That might be a week or a month or so. And then focus on clearing those emails emails one by one. Everything older than that can go straight into the archive. Bonus points if you're taking this opportunity to unsubscribe from any newsletters or promotions or other emails that aren't adding value to your life anymore. While most people have basically given up and surrendered and just let their email pile up endlessly, I really believe there's tremendous value and peace of mind in keeping a clean inbox. And by the way, I have another video that teaches you my exact system for reaching inbox zero consistently and almost effortlessly. Other inboxes that you might want to clear are your note-taking app, inbox, your messaging app such as Slack or WhatsApp, and your social media direct messages. Take a moment to mark all messages as read. And remember, not all messages require a response. If they're not making your life better, they need to go. Step number three, create your project list. Now, what qualifies as a project? It's anything that you're working on or working toward with a concrete outcome that you want to or need to get done by a certain date. And crucially, it's something that can't be completed in just one sitting. Otherwise, it's just a simple to-do. The simple act of writing this down will give you instant clarity and reduce your stress, I promise. Your project list is like a dashboard of all your current commitments, everything that's going on right now in your life. Having it front and center helps you focus your time and energy on the right things. At any given time, I have around 10 to 15 active projects. That's enough that if I get stuck on one, I can immediately turn to multiple other projects I have going on instead of getting completely bogged down and losing my momentum. 
This is my 10 minute challenge for you. Make a list of all the projects, every single one that you're actively working on right now. Now, how should you use your project list? I keep my task manager, my note-taking app, and my cloud storage organized by my active projects. That way, all the information and the files and the to-dos that are relevant for a given project have a single home. If you want to maintain an organized digital workspace, check out my video on the para method. The P in para stands for projects, by the way. I'll teach you my simple, intuitive system to store and find any information you need right when you need it. Step four. Turn off notifications. I'm talking incoming emails, Slack messages, other app notifications. None of those should interrupt you unless it's critically important. Remember that every time you give in to a distraction, you're actually training your brain to be more likely to give in to the next distraction. What I recommend doing is setting up designated times throughout the day or throughout the week to check your emails, your instant messages. Make sure that you are the one deciding when it's time to give them your attention. Finally, how often should you do this reset of your digital world? I do a version of the reset I described every week as part of my weekly review. It's a quick standardized process I follow every Sunday to clear all the accumulated information and to set priorities for the coming week. A weekly reset will make sure that you don't end up rolling over all the digital clutter from one week to the next, to the next, to the next, like a accumulating snowball. Check out the blog post I'm linking in the video description below for a walkthrough of how I do my weekly review. You might also want to do a more fundamental reset about once a year or so, or whenever you feel like the indicators that I discussed earlier in the video start creeping up again. If you found this helpful, you can get more tips like these every Tuesday in your email inbox by subscribing to our newsletter. Follow the link in the description.